I never had issues in technology. In technology, uh, it was agnostic. It's like, you can be wherever you want to be from, I don't care, make sure your code is uh, has comments, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then you go to a profession that is considered more of a status symbol, like acting or writing. And that's where the doors become to close, uh, start to close. Um, that is when it becomes an institutional situation where equity tries to fight Equity tries its best mm. uh, with a foreign-born actors uh, branch, and there is some surveys and some research that says, for example, 14% of uh, doctors and nurses uh, were not born in the UK, have heavy accents basically, and in every iteration of a TV show or a theatre play in the last few years, that was zero percent of actors mm. that were foreign-born. Hmm. It's just why well, I mean I'm just curious why because I'm pretty sure that most of the creators of the TV shows and like they want I want to believe most of them want their product to look as close as possible to real life. So why they don't think about that? Is it just like because they just don't think about it? I don't I don't I don't think it's someone it sits there like I will write this nearest British because... <laughs> it is easier to consume content that is as standardized as possible. Mm. Trying to understand an accent that is not too familiar to you takes a couple extra seconds of processing power in the brain. So when they did the research, uh, they saw that it's easier for the largely American audience, for example, to switch off if they are listening to someone that has an accent. Interesting. It is a lot, a lot of trying to make something that is as profitable straight out of the gate as possible. Now, you get people like Mads Mikkelsen. And I believe that Mads Mikkelsen is arguably one of the best actors of our generation. He is very good. Uh, indeed, yes. One of the best actors of our generation. <laughs> I noticed that a lot of women I, I know really think that. <laughs> um, Top three. No, he he's great. He's great. Honestly, he's great. I gotta say, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. Like, you know, he's Swedish, right? Or Danish. 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 I didn't see a lot of his stuff, you know, from his homeland. I never noticed. Does he have strong accent? Extremely strong accent. I never, like, honestly, for me, every time when I, when I watched him in the film, I never even paid attention. Like, I never even kind of, like, it never crossed my mind, like, oh, this dude has an accent. No, I was just like, oh, that's a bit. Because... He was denied so many auditions yeah. and parts because of his accent. And, and until, basically, he, Brian Fuller got him on Hannibal. Mm-hmm. And that was because of a personal recommendation of someone who had worked with him in a different show. No, but look, look, he was before Hannibal. He was in Hollywood. He was like, was he? Hannibal happened after he, Casino Royale for sure. No, he was always playing the part of the foreigner. Yeah. Well, the if you have an accent, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Why does it have to be the stereotypical part? Well, uh, because as you know, everything that is, everything that we know about other countries is a stereotype. Because in Armageddon, a Russian cosmonaut wears Shapka Ushanka, the, like the, the Ushanka hat, and fixes everything with, you know, like, like and, and, and just drinks vodka and he wears this, like, the, the, the tank to I don't know, like, I think it was like, it was just, Fancy. <laughs> it is. Every time, but like it, it now, now, I think there will kind of Ukrainian people will be shown in the series and films with more respect. But before, 
it was the same. <laughs> All of it. So that's why, like, oh, most of the additions I do is like evil Russian bandit Ivan, or or evil KGB, or FSB, or like with like another like, Russian soldier, just because I speak Russian. That's it. <laughs> and I completely understand that uh, before you are trusted with a bigger part, mm. that you have to cut your teeth on smaller parts. And we are now looking for the very authentic accent so now whenever we do like the small parts they go to the person that has exactly that accent well, yeah, no exactly <laughs> but when it's the other way around it doesn't work that way when they make a series about greece when they make a, a, a play multiple plays mm -hmm. in the national theater that are tragedies do the audition with people that have greek accents <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> no, I mean, it depends. It depends what kind of, what exactly they're trying to show. Because when uh, Craig Mason did Chernobyl, he, and it was like in Ukraine, most of the people kind of like in the Soviet Union were speaking Russian at that point, and Ukrainian as well, but I think like it was almost like international, um, you know, set in kind of international environment. Soviet international, right? Mm -hmm. Most people would be speaking Russian, obviously. And he said, like, we're not doing Russian accent. And I think he was right, because he should, like, everyone speaks English in the series, but they kind of consider, like, they kind of, they would be speaking Russian. Why would they speak Russian with an accent? So when they speak English, mm -hmm. they just speak clean English. Like, there is no way, like, why would they? All speak the English, English not with Russian the accent. accent. It, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, the same way that the, it was done in, I think it was Child Forty Four with Tom Hardy. They were they were talking with really strong, stupid Russian accent. It's like really why everyone in this country speaks their own language with accent. I don't know how to fix that problem. What I would like is opportunities, basically, because. I completely understand all the arguments. I completely understand, oh, there needs to be more legibility. Oh, we need to make it accessible to the majority of the English speaking world who is more attuned to specific English accent. I don't know about that because I'm not sure. And I, like, I don't have official statistics about that, but I spoke to quite a few of my friends who are not, um, their native languages of English who came here and most of them, including me, said that we actually understood foreigners in the beginning way better when they spoke English rather than actually British people. Because foreigners, like even though you have those very different accents from different parts of the world, but we kind of still, it was kind of the same for us. Like, yes. And it's very different. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to say. The experience we have as Europe, the others mm -hmm. who speak English as a foreign language, we understand each other better. Mm -hmm. And the people who have English as first language understand each other better. And the majority of the material that is created in the English speaking world goes English speaking world first, export second, and they have trained the rest of us to accept it as it is, which is fine. And then there's the questions of like, oh, why don't you go back home and have a career there? <laughs> and all of that is completely understandable because of course it's your country and you want to have more opportunities. Uh, I think where my point of view is, is um, drop the lower the standard, lower the access, just a tiny little bit, mm. because taxation without representation is not a fair thing. Wow, civil war we're starting. Uh, my main, um, you have all the acting schools, you have all the agents, you have all the people you pay a lot of money to, to improve your accent. And they all take your money. 
and they all say, yeah, you are going to be seen for auditions. But then when you actually speak to the casting directors, they say, oh, I can hear 1% of a different accent. And your accent, so I would never hire you for that part. And the big question becomes like, is it even possible at all to be hired for anything apart from Ivan, the mm-hmm. evil mafia guy? Yeah. Which I, again, to be fair, I wouldn't mind. No. What I don't understand, and it happened, I will not say name the project, but there was a project when I was like, I was auditioning for Russian prison guard. And they even liked the audition because they, they asked about my availability at some point, but then like they said, no, no. And then I'm watching the film, and then there is the guy who got the part, he doesn't speak Russian. Because he was trying to say something in Russian, and they kind of like, we're looking for Russian speakers. And that was Russian. It was like, I could barely understand what he said and only, only because I auditioned for that part. Yeah. And I was like, how is that like, and okay, maybe, maybe not me, but I know, I know three more people who auditioned for that role and it's tiny role. It's just like two sentences. None of that, none of us would ruin the film if they would cast us, but they decide to cast someone who doesn't speak right what it that's that what kind of a little bit kind of brings me down some that because you know what i'm right i could play russian bandit ivan for the rest of my life obviously at some point maybe i would want something more but like i'm ready but come on <laughs> but also there are russian bandits there are no great random People yeah, I think I think in this case, even though I'm not even Russian, I'm Russian speaking Ukrainian from Latvia, born in the USSR, living in London. It's I'm, like I have more representation. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And that is where it becomes uh, a big question of like, what are you doing with your life? Because uh, I just need to know that it is possible. Mm-hmm. And again, you go into the whole why was was I not picked for that one thing a year that I have an opportunity to get? Because that is that because my limitations mean that I will only get seen for a one percent of the one percent of the parts that are out there that are my age bracket or my casting bracket or something I would be suitably vis- visibly suitable for, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then it becomes such a trip of like, why did I not get that? Yada, yada, yada. And then you see, oh, a person that's actually from an English speaking country got that part, even though it is supposed to be like that exactly my casting. And I think that is something that the industry institutionally needs to fix. I think so, yes, I think in this case, like, because I do understand when it's like, it's a bigger part and they need a name, for example. A name, like bigger name, someone who will bring people to the cinema, who can do decent accent of whatever accent they, they're doing. And if they're doing decent accent, by the way, I, I have no problem with that because I think Florence Pugh, she did great Russian accent when she was playing like the, the sister of uh, what, what was her name? Black Widow, yeah. uh, whatever. My main question is how is a person who's foreign born going to have access to those opportunities and to the training, the, the multi-million dollar mm-hmm. training that the people who had the easy opportunities early on are afforded. I want to see a few examples Mm -hmm. of people who were able to do it the hard way and succeeded before I can say, yeah, this industry is is not basically uh, blacklisting us. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it feels like. It feels like that no matter how good you can be, no matter how much you put the effort in, you put the training in, you... My job is acting 24 seven at this point. Uh, And you get so much training, like you pay your dues. But then after you have paid your dues, is it even 
0.0001% possible mm. to make it to the two uncredited parts. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. So, so industry, yeah. tell me. I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious, why is that? Because it feels like in some cases, creators don't really care that much about this stuff. It's just like, because like they have a story to tell. Yes. And there, that's just like a tiny little part of the story, like your little character with a couple of lines that kind of 90% of the world or 95% of the world will never know the difference between the accent that they do or like what they say in your particular language. So it's kind of like, yeah, we have a bigger fish to fry. So we need to think more about like this bigger part, like this, like we were looking for the main part for a long time. So I guess that's one of the reasons because it's just, it's not that important. Not that important as it is for us. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I do believe that it is um, prejud uh, prejudice. <laughs> Wow, accent and legibility. I do not know how to say the word prejudice. I suppose I do not deserve an opportunity in this industry. <laughs> Why would they create a word that has all those consonants together? That just sounds uh, structurally wrong. Prejudice. Well, you know, the way you say it, it's cuter. <laughs> prejudice. I think the problem with the industry is prejudice. <laughs> I mean, uh, I was talking to, about that with my agent and she said like, yeah, I mean, I do understand there like there will be most of the jobs that you kind of apply now uh, would be this like, you know, stereotypical yeah. roles. Uh, she said like, I, I, I can see that the industry is changing and more creatives are trying to tell actually authentic stories of not just, you know, British people, but like everyone, because come on. London, London. London. Yes. If you're casting for someone's boyfriend or girlfriend mm. in London, yeah. the chances are, are that they are not going to be British born. Yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> both of them. Maybe <laughs> none of them. <laughs> but the whole 10 people in the series and, and none of them are British. <laughs> and it is not uh, us versus them. Yeah, because. Unfortunately, I think I'm more British than I'm Greek at this point. Yeah, I know. You know what? It's, it's it's so weird because I'm kind of going back to Latvia sometimes now, and I talk to my friends. Like, and I go to the show, for example. It's not like I'm not trying to say that Latvia like is a bad country and it's everyone country. in the country is rude, but like there, like people are there. They were like they're tougher a little bit more direct and sometimes sometimes it's not just direct sometimes they're rude and you come to the shop and you ask something so like someone who works in the shop you ask them something and they're just like and you're like what the fuck come on I, like i just i ask you shit that you should know it's your job and you're being rude to me and then i talk to my friends and they're like Hey, you're a snowflake. You lived in, in, in the UK for 10 years. Now you come back as a, snow, a snowflake here. I'm like, well, there's no reason to be rude because it will never, it will not make, like, I can understand being rude to someone who's being rude to you, but being rude to someone just like for no reason will not make you feel better or them feel better. Why? And they're like, yeah. Snowflake, go back to you. Yeah. At this point, we are culturally British. We are broken. We, we, you cannot give us back. You cannot return us. Please As, keep us. Please keep us. I've lived. Okay, let's let's do it like that. I've yeah. lived my entire adult life in the UK, and that was fifteen years. So I am. A British 16 year old. I'm a 16 year old child that is fully British at this point. Yeah. I know, I, I'm, I'm moaning a lot about it, but I feel like this is a structural issue. Like when you have like a trial, and there's a lot of things that do not go perfectly well, it still can continue. And you can still be like, oh, I'll fix this, I'll fix this at the closing argument, blah, blah, blah. 
But there are some issues that are structural, meaning that the entire trial has to be stopped mm. and then brought together again by prosecutor, etc. I read a lot of true crime. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, even though I've grinded away in the industry for the past six years, really, I feel like that is kind of um, the line in the sand that feels like this is your limits. You can do immersive theatre to a certain extent and only certain parts. Mm -hmm. You can do commercial edition and then anything more than that. Unless you are creating the whole product, we will choose someone who checks more boxes of you. And I have been said that directly by people who do casting, by producers. They're like, oh, this is great. Everything you do is great. But the fact that I can still hear something different in your accent means that one of the top three boxes will never be checked. It's... Uh... Honestly, for me, it kind of even feels a bit weird because I do understand that neither of us will ever play a British person. But it feels like... Don't you want it to be more authentic? So if a great girl plays a great girl in the series and has an accent of a Greek, it kind of should be better. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's just a lot of... Uh, going back to how I started writing. When you start writing, you write archetypes. Mm -hmm. You write what you know. And especially with novel writing, uh, fiction writing, it becomes a lot of reclaiming your own voice. But that also means that a lot of people who are British, they try not to write people from other, from other cultures. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of, uh, okay, I have this series that takes part, part in London and I will have um, maybe a person that has uh, Afro-Caribbean descent and maybe one of our writers will be able to write about them. Uh, and maybe one of the creators will be uh, sharing that heritage as well. And then it starts being wide enough but like this one project will only cover this specific non-white British uh, origin story, uh, this very, very narrow lens of not just monocultural representation. I understand that most of the stories in Britain will be told by British people about British people. It makes total sense. Yes. But when they ha there is an opening for someone who is not British, it would be nicer if this opening would be given to an authentic re re represent the representative. Re <laughs> yeah, representative. You see, that's why we don't, <laughs> we don't get cast. And give us uh, the jobs. We will try to say like 90% of the words. Yeah. And uh, then like if we mispronounce the word, it's even cuter like this. Uh, but basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's better when uh, it goes to representative of that culture rather than someone who is has nothing to do with it. <laughs>